Hey guys, Houston Dragnet with Personas here. In our last video, we showed you how to use the Studio Series interfaces to create a simple recording. Um, in this video, we're actually going to be focused on the mix side of things using Studio One and the Studio Magic plugin suite that is included with any purchase of one of our Studio interfaces or mixers. Okay, so first things first, um, I've kind of done like a little bit of setup here, um, but what I like to do when I first jump into a mix is do a, a few quick edits. Uh, just to kind of clean up the bulk of the track. So what I'm going to be using here is my little cut tool. Look at it at the top of the screen right here. Just going to click that guy and then using the W and E keys, I can zoom out or zoom in to the track to make a finer edit. So I'll just click right there to shorten up uh, the guitar intro right there and then zoom out, find where I want to edit on the vocal and do the same thing. Okay, and then uh, just so we keep our place and we aren't deleting anything that we might want later, I'll grab the mute tool right here and mute these sections so they're not gonna be um, an issue to worry about later. We won't get any bleed over or anything like that. Okay, so from here we can go and select our cursor back. Um, and so with this, uh, I guess we'll start with the guitar track first. We can go ahead and hit the solo button right here just to hear just it. And that's a solid recording, uh, but what we may want to do is um, throw some compression on it, throw a little bit of EQ on it, and I feel like the perfect thing to do that is the PreSonus Fat Channel that is included in Studio One Artist. So um, I have it preloaded on onto the track right here. Um, all you need to do to load a plugin simply is go to the browser right here, find it in your effects, and then you can just do sort of like a drag and drop. So just for that, I can throw that alter filter right there, just as a drag and drop. You can right click it and remove it easy as that. So I already have this fat channel in, let's double click. And here we go. Um, so in the fat channel, um, you're gonna have essentially what you'd see on one of our Studio Live mixers. You'll have an input section with your high pass filter and gate, a compressor, an equalizer, and a limiter section. So I like to go from left to right. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this on. So high pass filter, let's say we leave it around 75 hertz or so, take out some of that unwanted low end energy. Uh, the compressor, I'm choosing to use um, our FET style compressor um, from our new FAT channel plugin that has three different styles of both compressors and equalizers. Um, so we have that there, I kind of have my, my favorite preset there. And feel free to mess around with this as much as you can. You can save presets, um, you can load them, you can uh, use some of our presets to, uh, to kind of work to your taste. Uh, so with our equalizer, we have three different models. Um, the one that I'm preferring to use is gonna be our vintage model, um, EQ. Uh, just, it's what works for me. Um, don't let that be something rock solid that you have to adhere to, but I think this one sounds great. All right, so with all this turned on and it's kind of already been tweaked to, to what I prefer, let's listen to a, uh, an AB comparison. So this is with it off again. Let's turn it on and see what that does. So I think that makes it sound a lot more full, kind of balances out on the EQ side of things. And I think that'll work really well for our mix. Uh, so for the vocals, I like to start off with a little bit of compression first. I'm gonna be using uh, the Brainworks BX Opto. It's an optical compressor that comes in the Studio Magic plugin suite. It's really, really cool. Um, and so this is without the compressor. I wanted you to love me. I wanted to prove it. That I could really and shake it, it. And I could really move it. If you'll see in Studio One on each of the channel strips, this little yellow meter right here. And honey, I move. Shows you how much gain reduction you have going on on the channel, which is really useful. So after compression, I like to do a little bit of EQ. Um, so for that, I've chosen the Studio One Pro EQ. So let's see what that looks like. Um, one thing that's really cool about the Pro EQ is that um, whenever it's on, you are able to see a, um, a real-time analysis or an RTA um, of the track that you're monitoring. So what's cool about that is it'll show you where the high and low points of the frequency response is for that particular input. 
So this is before. Could have done better. It's what you always told me. And this is after. You could have done better. It's what you always told me. The order didn't like that. And so what I do for simple EQing is I'll actually, instead of um, reducing the peaks, I'll actually boost something like this, um, like we're doing on this low mid frequency, finding something that kind of sticks out a little bit too much and is a little harsh, and then bring that frequency down. So I'll show you an example. So watch as um, I play the track, I'll sweep through the frequency, and then bring down the ones that I don't like. I thought you undersold me. I wanted you to love me. I wanted to improve it. All right, so that sounds like the spot where it's a little too hollow sounding, so I'll bring that down. Just a little bit. That I could really shake it. And it cleans it right up. I also like to roll off the low end using this high pass filter right here. Um, so I'm just kind of take it out to the to where there's no uh, rumble in the low end and it kind of takes out some of that unnecessary um, audio energy that really don't belong in the vocal tracks. So let's listen. And I could really move it. And honey, I move. The whole damn world. Alrighty. And uh, the last little cool thing that I want to throw in there is a, uh, a harmonizer for um, what I'm going to be using it for is for a, uh, a vocal doubling effect. So we only did one track with Lauren earlier. So in order to give her a more kind of full sound, what we can do is use this uh, Studio Magic uh, included plugin called the Eventide Harmonizer. Um, it's their H910 model. And so uh, what you can do with this, there's a few presets on there. My favorite is preset four, the vocal doubler. Um, so I'll show you before and after of what it sounds like uh, on this track. For you, oh honey, I move the whole damn world for you. And I think that sounds awesome. It really kind of opens up the, uh, the stereo image of the song. It, uh, it just makes it more interesting to listen to than a mono vocal. Watch, we'll do one more comparison. So this is off. Like the hell, I thought you undersold me. We'll do the same with the vocal doubler on. It's told me the order didn't like the hell, I thought you undersold me. So I think that'll work just fine. All right, so now that we have our compression, EQ, uh, the doubling effect on the vocal, and the acoustics done, uh, what we may want to do next is uh, unmute all of these. We can come over here for a solo clear to remove the solos off all the tracks so everything's going to be heard all at once. Um, and what I'm doing over here is I have some effects that I want to show you guys later. Um, but for right now, let's just keep the tracks dry with the compression and EQ that we've done and just kind of listen back for a level balance. We'll start right before the vocals come in. Okay, yeah, so the guitar is a little bit loud, so I just brought that down simply by dragging the fader down right here. Um, so I think we're going to be good with that. Uh, next, we can move on to our effects. So uh, what I've gone ahead and done is created two effects buses. Um, the easiest way to do that is just to right click on a track, and you can click Add Effects Channel right here. I'll show you what an example of that looks like. So it added a third one right here. Um, that's just for an example. We can go ahead and get rid of that just by right clicking and hitting Remove. Um, and to expand any, any of our tracks, all you need to do is double click. So here, um, I'll show you a little bit more about this setup. So whenever you create an effects track, you have to choose tracks to send to it in order so they can receive the effects and actually be heard in the track. Um, so right here, you have a selection for uh, adding and removing sends. Uh, so for this one, I've added uh, this track to send to essentially a copy of itself to track uh, the FX track one and FX track two. Uh, same with the uh, vocal track right here. Um, so what this does is uh, essentially adds it to an effects bus to where you can assign 
um, a reverb or delay, any kind of time-based effects is what's typically commonly used there. Um, in this example, I'll be using one effects track for reverb, one effects track for delay. Um, I've chosen the Lexicon um, MXPI native reverb that comes in the Studio Magic Suite. Um, and I'm going to be using the large plate preset. So let's see how that sounds. So this is before. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and then I'll start fading up the effects fader um, until we start to hear the reverb start to come through. I wanted you to love me I wanted to improve it I could really shake it And I could really move it And honey, I could So you can hear, even after we pause it, it adds a lot of space and airiness to the mix. Might be a little too much, so let's back it down just a tad. I always like to do that with my mixes. I'll add too much effects, and then I'll back it off just a hair until it sits just right. So let's hear what it sounds like now with a proper mix. Sounds great. And then if you go into here, you can... Uh, change some more of your presets, you can adjust the mix. Since it's already on an effects bus, I just typically leave it at 100%, so the only thing I'm pushing up is the reverb. All right, so we can go ahead, leave that where it is, and we'll move on to the delay. My delay of choice is gonna be the analog delay plugin made by Presonus within Studio One Artist. And so this is just a simple um, analog emulated delay. I mean, it's, of course it's digital, but it's gonna give you more of that kind of classic analog delay feel. Um, so with this, there are some cool features that um, aren't typically found in old school analog delays. Uh, one of my favorites is gonna be this, uh, this time section right here. You can sync it to the beat of the actual song. So re-recorded to a click track, which means we can select. Um, I have it selected at half notes right now. Uh, so every half note, every two beats, it'll essentially give me a delayed signal, which is really cool. So I'll go ahead and turn this on, play the track, and we'll listen as I fade it up to where we can start to hear it. It's what you always told me Lord, I didn't like that I thought you undersold me I wanted you to love me I wanted to improve it I could really shake it And I could And I could And I could And then so on and so forth So that might be a little much Let's back it off into that sweet spot And we should be good to go uh, and in the delay, if you feel like it's repeating too many times, that's going to be adjusted with the feedback knob. You bring that feedback down, it'll do less repeats. All right, so let's listen now with a more proper mix. All right, well, that sounds awesome. All right, um, so I think we've kind of built a basic mix. What we can do um, before we, we go ahead and export this out and, and bounce it to a CD or, or just to our desktop so we can listen, share it with our friends. Um, what I want to do is go over here to our master main, or what I want to do is go over to our main bus section and maybe throw a little bit of EQ over the entire track, not just each of the individuals, and put a limiter on there to make sure it doesn't clip and maybe raise up the volume just a little bit so it's more pleasant to listen to. All right, so um, let's go ahead with the limiter first. Oh, honey, I grew, for you. Could have done better. It's what you always told me. Lord, it didn't lie. Lord, it didn't lie. Lord, it didn't lie. All right, well, that, I think that sounds good. It's a little bit louder now. Um, and it's not going to clip since you have that limiter on there. Um, okay, so you may have heard the track loop over a little bit. Um, so that's because I have a loop set here at the top of the timeline. Um, and so you can use, whenever you put your cursor way up here at the top, um, a little pencil uh, cursor symbol will show up. And that means that you can uh, both draw tracks and then if you reach towards the end, you can drag it to uh, lengthen it or shorten it. So if you have a certain part you want to listen to over and over again, you can loop that uh, so you don't have to keep coming back to the start, hitting play, wait till it finishes, and so on and so forth. Makes it a little bit easier for editing. 
Okay, so now that our limiter's done, we're gonna go ahead and to our overall master EQ for the song. And so for this, I'll play it um, just before the vocals kick in, just kind of listen to the acoustic. And then when the vocals uh, kick in, I'll start messing with the, uh, the master EQ and kind of finish up the song. I'm also using the pro EQ for this section just because I feel it's, uh, it's a really powerful tool and it has the built-in RTA, which makes it really, really easy for kind of seeing where the, uh, the high points and the low points are in the mix that you may need to balance out. All right, guys, well, I think that sounds great. Um, don't take this as set in stone. Uh, feel free to use your own artistic expression, mix how you want, keep tweaking until you feel that it sounds great. Um, but that's just a quick tutorial of how to use some of the basic features within Studio One and the Studio Magic plugin suite. Thanks for joining, we'll see you next time.